Okay, thanks, thanks, Elaine. 45 seconds. <clears throat> well, I'll just give you a little introduction. Uh, I've worked as a geologist in the mining and oil and gas industries and with government too for about, I think, 47 years. So, uh, and now I'm, I am a, I'm registered as a geologist, hydrogeologist with the state, and I've read registrations with two other national organizations, blah, blah, blah. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna first, uh, before I talk about my water talk, where I've got about 70 slides, I've got seven slides to talk about Hydro One, Avista, a Vista One, whatever it might be. Uh, I, talk, I talked about this a uh, couple places. I, I gave a, uh, a talk and we videoed that talk at the East Meets West Caper Conference in Ellensburg in September. That's still available online. Then I had two other published sources, thanks to Rich to getting that on the Gem, Street, Gem State Patriot. It was also an article published at Readout News. I have not heard from Spokesman Review uh, <laughs> or from other organizations. Are there, are there any people here from Avista? Raise your hand. Anybody from Avista? Because I've invited some people to hear about this. The, uh, my talk that I gave at the Republican Coffee Club was about 70 slides. I'm sorry. Uh, Rob, it was so long. We didn't. We tried to get through that in two sessions, and it was uh, really too long. So we can have a third. We can have a third. Okay, <laughs> I can start over. Um, <clears throat> so we have handouts here. A four-page handout that was published by Rich at Gem Street State. I'm sorry, Rich. Gem State Patriot News. And then there. What else do we have? So we have the uh, slides, slides that I'm going to present here tonight. And the other four page article that was published at Gem State is there. Now if you're not familiar with this, the, the people in Ontario are suffering greatly. And no one here knows about this. I don't think anyone from Babista has ever visited to find out how bad it really is. The reason, the reason this is happening, and I'm not trying to be flippant on this. Here's Democrat Chicken Little. He's running away from global warming. And this is what's happening in Ontario. The, the socialist premier Kathleen Wynne in Ontario in 2009 got a bill passed called the, 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 uh, the Green Energy Act. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that ended all the coal-fired power plants which were the best source of power, cheapest power in North America for Ontario. So they started on wind turbines and that's their pri almost their primary source of power but most of the time they're down. So let's, I'm just gonna try to summarize this here this slide shows how the prices of electricity have increased there in Ontario. There's three rates here for Hydro One. The low, <coughs> low density urban rate there was 29.9 cents in 2015. It increased 25% in 2016. It did increase in 2017. But I've got a slide here coming up that shows you what, it's, what it is this year and what it will be next year. So compared to that, this rate right here is the consumer price index for Ontario. So you can see how much of the electricity has increased. And in, a, in addition, in red there, it says Hydro One has disconnected 60,000 people for non-payment. Many of them have had to go off grid. They're, they're cooking on barbecues. They're using generators. Uh, they just find the, the power unaffordable. And so their electricity has increased 144% in 10 years. 25% uh, as I said last year. People like this elderly couple can't afford their power. They're choosing either way they're going to eat or turn on the the electricity. On the right side, 
<coughs> is the consumer prices and the electricity compared and how much they've increased over the same period. It's kind of the same as the graph I just showed you in the last slide. If you go to, on the internet, you can find YouTube article after YouTube article that just is just like stories like this. Grocery stores are closing because they can't afford to run their refrigeration. And most of the people are affected are the ones in rural Ontario <coughs> beyond the natural gas pipelines. Next slide. There are at least uh, seven websites that represent people that are they're so disgusted with Ontario's power situation, they're, they have uh, gatherings and they're uh, simply trying to voice their, their displeasure with the way the power prices are going. So there's one picture um, that we had in the article that I published with uh, Gemstate. Then there are two other articles, the one that would read out, and then Karen Shoemaker wrote another article saying Canada now owns part of Idaho. Then on the right side here, there was a diagram like this, but I, try, I updated it. I wanted to know what the renewable capacity is by various countries, and then the cost of power in cents per kilowatt hour for U.S. currency. If so right. A, if you get a generator and start running it, they won't pay you for your electricity that, that, that you use. That's right. That's right. So here we are at a Vista, 7.8 cents per kilowatt hour. Washington State's a little higher at 11.9 cents. U.S. average at 15 cents. Here's Chelan and Douglas County PUD. They're they're at two cents. Last year, their industrial rate for Chelan and and Douglas counties just increased to one cent per kilowatt hour. Now on the other hand, Hydro One was right here in 2015. I'll, I showed you that data a couple slides back. This year, this is where they are right now. That's 66 cents US. Next year they'll be there. What's that? Per kilowatt hour. So multiply that, how much do you use? 600, 800, I use about 950. Washington's average is about 1,000 kilowatt hours per month. So in addition, Hydro One also has what they call a, what do I, what do we, I forgot what they call it, uh, a global adjustment fee. So that covers the cost of uh, taking down all the coal plants, the cost of you know, a new bureaucracy to run the, the Green Energy Act, but mostly it covers the cost of paying for wind power and they paid companies like Samsung uh, uh, 10 times the, co the cost of what they could buy power on uh, the market competitively just so they could have wind turbines. So anyway, so here also I show Germany is really high. Denmark is high at 44 cents. South Australia is another nightmare. If you, if you follow some of the news from uh, New South Wales, there's a website that's called Joe Nova. And she talks about the horrors that are going on in Adelaide and Melbourne where the power goes off when they have really bad weather. It's either hot or too cold. So, uh, so it's not really good. And, and the reason that their power goes off is because they're depending on wind turbine power. When the wind doesn't blow, when it's hot or when it's too cold, they don't have any power. So the, South Australia's answer to this was to close the GM Holden car factory and 14,000 people went out of work but they have more power on account of that. Okay, enough of my ranting there. So do a Vista customers want to go from, go in the direction of this arrow to increase our prices to where they are at Hydro One? There's a possibility we have the, the Utilities and Transportation Commission that will uh, 
perhaps have some say in the issue of, of rates, but if we have a Democratic uh, House and Senate, which we do now, uh, they may see uh, the view of Ontario and the problem with Ontario, and I, did, I didn't include that, but there's a member of parliament in Ontario that set on a, her YouTube pr presentation that Ontario is going to retain 40% ownership in Hydro One, and the Ontario Energy Board will dictate how Hydro One operates. I forgot her name. I was sorry I didn't get that. You had a question? With all the problems that Hydro One is generating, as you're discussing, why would a Vista want to join up with a group like that? Well, Scott, what, Scott Morris has $10 million coming in his buyout of his uh, stock. The other, other people have less, but the, peop the, the major companies like Blackwater that own much of their stock, well, they're just interested in the money. They don't, ha they don't have to be a, a customer. Yeah, but the problems they have up there can flow down to us. That's right. That's and, right. Uh, the whole thing makes no sense. That's why we should be worried because uh, if Vista doesn't care, their employers really can't, employees can't voice their opinion, even though they may agree. Uh, and, of course, and of course, the you know, what, what can we do? The, what you can do is there are five utility and transportation c commissions. There's there's the one in Washington, so you can get the address and complain to them, write a letter. There's one in Idaho, there's one in Montana, there's one in Oregon, and there's one in Alaska. Plus there's the, um, is it nuclear? No, it's not the nuclear. The group that uh, oversees power, power systems, the, the national organization, I can't recall the name. So there's only six organizations you could complain to. Okay, let's just go on a little further. Yeah. I'm sorry, um, David. Yes. How do you refute uh, Scott Morris's statement that uh, uh, they're going to continue running it <coughs> as it's been, and they uh, are governed by American uh, commissions and, and yeah. Canadian company or Canadian government cannot uh, control any of the pricing? Well, yeah, that's a, that's a good statement, but that, that really only holds true for about two years. That's all he's promised. I, I read, I think, three years. Uh, three years, okay. okay. The, the, other, the other item is that there, there may be a majority on the board of directors of the new holding company that's, that are held by Hydro One uh, members. Plus, the Washington Commission is not an elected commission. They could right. and make a deal with them. Right. I don't know. I don't have a good answer to many of these questions. I, I really don't. All I am doing is, is collecting information and trying to pass it on to people. And I've been doing this now since about uh, August when I first realized that there's this uh, a bogus Green Energy Act that's behind the whole force. And that's why now they're visiting us on our front door. So here's the article. It was written just a week ago by Don Brockett. He's the former city prosecutor. Is that right? Okay. County. 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 Okay. So he had these comments. Uh, Canada is a foreign socialist country. And I added that corporations in Canada are crown corporations. They're subject to the Privy Council. Read on Wikipedia. That means that the UK British government is involved. Mm. <coughs> We're going to go back underneath what? the Queen now. Yeah, so the other item next, I mentioned Hydro One may have a majority on the board of directors. <coughs> and so, should a Vista customers uh, serve a foreign government? And then, who decides rates? And then, Brockett says this, the sale should not be approved. Here. Well, I had a few other comments. So, Let's just go through some of these. I'm going to use my pointer. So I mentioned Kathleen Wynne of Ontario is a Sierra Clubber socialist. Uh, she ended coal power and brought in wind power hell to that uh, province. They're terrified of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a mother gas. It's a plant fertilizer. It's, it's a food production miracle. 
it is greening the earth right now as I speak. Cap and trade is, is started this year as part of the Green Energy Act. Uh, this will cost customers in time an extra $3,700 per month. Some of it's added to the cost of goods sold. Some of it is actually part of a tax. Uh, the cap and trade is a valueless European scheme so politicians can brag about their rhetorical benefits that they're bringing. Cap and trade forces Canadian utilities to look, look for new U.S. clean energy assets. By February of last year, so just a, a year ago, Canadians already paid $28 billion for new and purchases of U.S. utilities. Now taxation of carbon dioxide, that, that's starting this year at $50 per ton. A three-car family will pay $1,987 in carbon tax. That's in addition to this, 69% of the carbon tax is paid on air. If you think about how large a, mo a, a molecule of, of gasoline is, and it combines with oxygen, so it has a, has a much heavier weight than the original fuel, and there's a lot more of it in particular. So in the combination of the air and the fuel, most of, the, most of what you're paying on is 69% air in the tax on carbon dioxide. So if you go back to your chemistry, you can see how that actually works out. So the carbon tax is, like it will be in Washington, it's a bait and switch shell game. And it really accomplishes nothing. Well, it accomplishes revenue for it, it, it's a taxing, somebody. It's a taxing, uh, or, or yeah. taxing measure. It doesn't do anything about climate because carbon dioxide is totally irrelevant mm -hmm. in climate. And the other item that's really disturbing is that Hydro One that will then trade a Vista's 1,200 megawatts of hydropower dams for cap and trade carbon indulgences on Al Gore's, Barack Obama's, Chicago, Ontario, or Jerry Brown's California Climate Exchange. They, they have a choice. And the final point is that Australia had a carbon tax in 2012, and they quickly ended it after two years after, after it caused such damage. And here's the wind, so here's the wind power hell in, in Ontario. So here's uh, three Great Lakes, uh, <coughs> Ontario, Erie, and uh, <coughs> tell me, <laughs> you're on. Okay, so they have wind turbines, the green and the red areas, on all three shores. And here's what here's one that was on the internet. It, it broke in half. Here's and here's a close up. There's Niagara Falls, and here's all the wind turbines there. There's 237 in 10 projects. Let's say no, 200, or 295 wind turbines there. There's 237 wind projects in Ontario, uh, more than 6,700 wind turbines. And then the question is, would you like to live right here? There's 37 residences along that highway right there. And then th there's all the wind turbines. They have a setback of 1,000 meters. Tell them hello. <laughs> okay. So anyway, uh, there, there's great uh, uh, difficulties, particularly with health health effects from wind turbines if they're nearby. And the final point, I don't know why that didn't work. I'll bet I've got the my PDF instead of the PowerPoint here. That was supposed to come on just a little time. So anyway, this <clears throat> I'm sorry, it's there's all that stuff so fast, but. Here's all the people that are the climate profiteers. Of course, Al Gore on the top. Number two man is the father of global warming, Maurice Strong. He dreamed it up. Do you know, that, anybody ever hear of Maurice Strong? Here's his picture, here's his quote. Isn't the only hope to save the planet that the industrial civilizations collapse? Isn't it our responsibility to bring that about? 
This is what he said at the 1992 Rio summit where he was the chair. And then, <clears throat> if you have time to read this, that shows how Al Gore, Barack Obama, Maurice Strong, David Suzuki, Richard Sandor, and George Soros all became board of directors on the Chicago Climate Exchange. Now, if we have to go into cap and trade, there's no maximum fee for trading carbon. These people could raise enough money in two years to, to raise their own army. They, they could take in that much money on carbon indulgences. Yes? I found out that that Chicago Carbon Exchange now oversees the California <coughs> Carbon Exchange. Is that? Okay. Yeah, I know Al Gore sold his share in 2010 for $16 million. So he is not a board member, but he does have a company that's an aggregator called Generation Investment Management, which he has with David Blood. Okay. Enough of that. Oh, oh, remember Mr. Obama's statement? Yeah, I remember that. Under my plan, electricity rates will necessarily skyrocket. Well, he, would, he already knew he was doing this when he told us that we have to pay more for our electricity. Okay, that's enough of that. All right. <clears throat> so, Elaine, that's my five minutes. Thank you. Okay, bye, folks. <laughs> Now the real show comes. All right, I don't. I won't yell as much on this one. <laughs> it's a little more fun. Dave, I had a question about the wind turbines. Yeah, go I ahead. Read that uh, it takes about two to three hundred tons of coal to make steel. <coughs> well, I tried to go through on the raw materials, and I got so lost in the, the numbers that are so exorbitant uh, that, for the most part, it to to build enough wind turbines to at least uh, forestall any increases in need for additional power uh, would require resources for doing that that are more than a thousand times our annual production of those things. Coal, uh, steel, iron ore. Most of the iron ore comes from Brazil or Australia. Uh, well, it goes to China and it comes here. <laughs> and then the, we need, they need a lot of, of oil to make the turbines because the turbines are um, uh, fiberglass. And then you have to transport those because they're all coming from South Korea. Yeah, but then there's the general yeah. maintenance of each uh, of the I, don't, I have that no idea. I, yeah, I have no idea. It, it's a terrible idea. Well, the quick question is, are yeah. the subsidies coming to an end, possibly coming to an end for wind, wind energy and all that? No, they, they got renewed. Right, they they got, got, renewed. got renewed. Right. But every time there is a doubt that they may not continue, then there's an investment lull. But right now, it looks like there's not been an increase in capacity added. And of course, if you don't know this, the wind, the wind turbines in Washington only produce about 25% of their capacity. And that's pretty common. Some states it's only 7%. And of course, that's whenever they feel like turning. And those, there are 40, 46 uh, wind turbine projects in Oregon and Washington. The uh, Bonneville Power Administration uh, keeps track of five minute by five minute production on all of them. So you can go to the website and look at that. And you can see that, oh, in January, they were, st they were, they were stopped for two weeks. What's that? Uh, is the purchase of uh, Avista by Hydro One done? No. It, there, it has to be heard by all the, the utility commissions, but I don't know what the timing is. Uh, in Idaho, I think they, were, they had still a month or two to go, so if you get something to them within two to four weeks, it's likely to be heard. I used to go to the annual meeting of Oh yeah. And one of the officers said that global warming is settled science. Uh, have you studied them and and what may be happening uh, regarding them or not? So, 
can I answer the global inlet power, and light. inlet power? No, I don't go there. If if they believe that, they're beyond uh, repair. Yeah. Because they're, the st the statement it's settled science. Well, it's just not so because that's that's something that was an article was written by a lady that's a, that's a sociology professor. And of course, she was just trying to read certain words in abstracts of scientists, and she was she was assuming a lot by finding a particular word in their abstracts that they believed in global warming, when in fact many times people write uh, papers on climate change and global warming, which is not called that anymore. They changed it so now it covers all possible ills. So people uh, want to get grants, they have to say they're going to say something good about climate change. That's probably, yeah, Rob. I went to the Utilities and Transportation Commission meeting they had here, um, I think it was in September or October. Yeah. At that time they said they wouldn't bring it up for about six or eight months yet. And That's There's only Cindy Zabatot, he, myself, and one other person, about three of us, and about 80 people, uh, all okay. more. Shutting down coal strip and you know going to total green energy. Yeah. So it'd be nice if when we do find that out, if um, you know LA <clears throat> can send it out to this group and have some people. <clears throat> well, all I can say is I need help. If I can't do this anymore, I've got you know like four know. four jobs already, and I'm trying to keep up with this. So you know any volunteers would be gladly appreciated. They could watch things like those timetables. <laughs>